The tech-heavy Nasdaq 100 index has jumped 39% so far this year, fueled mainly by massive rallies in AI-related stocks such as Nvidia, Alphabet, and Microsoft. Nvidia surged a stunning 192%, prompting some commentary suggesting the stock may be overvalued. But not everyone thinks the AI stock boom has run too far. Wharton professor Jeremy Siegel has said he doesn't see the hype around the sector as a bubble and tradier CEO Dan Raju told Insider that. The talk around an AI bust is unfounded at this stage. Market pundits including veteran economist David Rosenberg and experts from Wall Street names such as Bank of America, UBS, and TAM Asset Management have likened the surge in AI tech shares to the boom in internet-related stocks toward the end of the 20th century, which eventually ended with the market crash of 2000. The AI boom is primarily accredited by OpenAI's ChatGPT has taken the world by storm, highlighting the benefits and capabilities of artificial intelligence, AI, and how it can be applied in every industry and business, small or enterprise. Mark Racinovich, Microsoft Azure CTO, explains the technology stack behind their purpose-built AI supercomputer infrastructure. It was developed by NVIDIA and Microsoft Azure, in collaboration with OpenAI, to host ChatGPT and other large language models, LLMs, at any scale. It's been a band for a decade in our HPC clusters. It has better cost performance than Ethernet, and Azure is unique compared to every other cloud for that. It's one of the key reasons OpenAI actually came to us. It's, we've been battle testing this for many years. And of course, we've since built even bigger systems than the one we talked about publicly back in 2020. We collaborated with NVIDIA to deliver purpose-built AI infrastructure with NVIDIA GPUs. The multiple GPUs required to train LLMs don't all operate on the same board or even the same rack. They're spread out due to the power consumption and heat. And we want to network and cluster as many GPUs as we can. And the new H100 VM series in Azure, powered by NVIDIA H100 Tensor Core GPUs, lets you choose one or more GPUs, cluster up to eight GPUs per VM using NVLink, and scale out to thousands if your demands grow using NVIDIA Quantum 2 InfiniBand networking. That's up to 30 times higher performance in inferencing and four times higher for training compared to NVIDIA's previous A100 generation of GPUs. These are designed specifically for multi-tenant cloud compute, giving us the ability to isolate customers sharing the same server from one another. And with that, we can achieve the elastic scale that we need. Right, and it's all put. So how much have we improved the throughput then for our GPUs? Yeah, so from a throughput perspective, starting with a single node using NV Switch and NV Link 4.0, bisectional bandwidth can reach 3.6 terabytes per second between eight local GPUs. And to put that in perspective, at that speed, you could download about 80 4K videos in less than a second. Just wish I could do that. <laughs> Everybody does. <laughs> yeah. Then easy scale out with more nodes using a non-blocking fat tree network architecture. The InfiniBand links deliver 400 gigabits per GPU, which is a total of 3.2 terabits per server. And how can everyone use Azure supercomputer capabilities for their own workloads in Azure, even if maybe they're coming from a smaller workload or job? Well, our AI infrastructure supports everything for very small jobs like you saw. In yeah, that, demo. that was a pretty yeah, small pretty tiny job. tiny job right there. Yeah. Two very large ones like on OpenAI scale. So if you just want to take advantage of our optimized hardware infrastructure, you can of course bring, could just use the virtual machines and do it yourself, taking advantage of our hardware infrastructure, the best in class GPUs, the InfiniBand networking, the fact that we know how to tune those networks to maintain them with a high degree of utilization and efficiency. But if you want to focus on building and running models, you can take advantage of our frameworks and MLOps services. So for example, you can use our Onyx runtime that I mentioned, or use our deep speed training framework for a more efficient distributed training. And you can use Azure Machine Learning's PaaS services that natively integrates with our AI infrastructure to build your models. And with AML, you can easily fine tune models like GPT-4 and deploy the fine tune models 
as managed services for your own applications to use. So how are we seeing organizations today then leverage Azure's AI supercomputer for their own solutions? Well, there are a lot of really interesting use cases where customers are using training and inference on top of our large scale infrastructure. One of them that's one of my favorites is Wave. It's a company in the UK that is a leader in autonomous driving technologies. So what they're doing is specializing in distributed AI powered autonomous systems for self-driving vehicles using primarily vision-based machine learning. And they're using our AI supercomputer to gather, manage, and train those models on millions of hours of driving data per year. That's petabytes of data, consisting of images, GPS data, and data from other sensors. Each individual training sample can be hundreds of megabytes in size. And by comparison, a training sample for a LLM is typically just a few K in size. Mm -hmm. So there are also training models with billions of parameters and use Azure Machine Learning and AKS for large-scale distributed deep learning and orchestration. And that's key because WAVE requires a lot of linear scaling, optimal memory utilization, and a fast GP interconnect with minimal latency with high throughput. And that's where we excel. Right, and Azure is literally the best place to run something like this, but Let's switch gears though, because last time you were on, we actually covered confidential computing. And this is something that you've helped actually develop as part of the solution set in Azure. So there's a lot more importance here with confidential computing with AI workload, right? That's right. When you talk about AI workload, you're talking about the data you use to train them, which can be very sensitive data. Mm -hmm. The model that you train actually can have a lot of IP. Obviously, OpenAI has a lot of IP in their models, and so do many other customers like Wave yep. have IP in their models. And then finally, for the consumers of those models, like people that are using Azure OpenAI, when they send their queries in, that data is also very sensitive. So with confidential computing, you can protect all of that data end to end in a trusted execution environment, which is provided by hardware with a hardware root of trust that only you have access to. That means the data in memory is protected and encrypted. Data is only in the clear while running inside of that TE, and it's re-encrypted and unreadable when it leaves that TE. That prevents third parties and processes, including Azure operators, from accessing the data and models. That enables confidential multi-party collaborations and what we call confidential data clean rooms, where parties can combine their data sets for training and each party is unable to access anyone else's data. In the example of autonomous vehicles, that would allow multiple vehicle manufacturers, GPS providers, and AI developers to work together to share the data needed to build intelligent self-driving solutions. And confidential GPU is an area where we're investing heavily in today with NVIDIA and other hardware partners. We announced at GTC recently that NVIDIA is coming out with confidential hopper GPUs. Right, so this is something that's evolving quickly, this whole space. So what's next then on the horizon? Everything we do to build these systems pays dividends to anybody using Azure, whether you're using AI or not. It means they're gonna have lower cost, higher scale, more efficient data centers, more powerful software frameworks. Right now in the area of AI, we're in the process of rolling out those NVIDIA H100 GPUs for AI and HPC. And you're gonna see us make Project Forge available for everyone to use as you train and run your AI models, like I mentioned earlier. And there's lots more innovation on an ongoing basis to always make sure we're best in class to run and train your AI workloads. Stay connected for more updates. Thanks for watching.